Hello all. We know that metamaterial is an interesting field to all the RF and microwave engineers. The high impedance surfaces is a class of metamaterial exhibiting some interesting properties. So in this section, we can discuss what are the main characteristics of high impedance surfaces. High impedance surfaces was introduced in 1999 by Dan Steven Piper. It consisted of a periodic array of sub-wavelength patches over the grounded dielectric. The patches are of hexagonal shape and these are connected to the ground through wires. So this is the top view and the cross-sectional view of the high impedance surfaces. And when we are going to consider the equivalent circuit model, we can see that due to the current flowing in between these patches and the ground layer, they form an inductive component. And as these patches are separated by the dielectric, they form a capacitive element. So this can be considered as a parallel combination of an inductor and capacitor. Based on this circuit, the total impedance can be given by Z of omega is equal to J omega L by 1 minus omega square LC. And the resonance frequency can be defined as 1 by root LC. So let's discuss about some of the important characteristics exhibited by high impedance surfaces. First property is surface phase suppressions or it can be called as electromagnetic band gap characteristics. Surface waves are actually propagating electromagnetic waves in between two dissimilar media, such as if you have a metal dielectric interface, these surface waves will be propagating in between these media. If these interfaces have some discontinuities like bends, they will be scattered from these surfaces. For a sub wave, for a uh, surface to support any of these surface waves, it should have some impedance. If the surface is supporting TM surface waves, it should have an impedance given by is the distance of TM is equal to J alpha by omega epsilon. So this indicates that if a surface has an inductive impedance given by this expression, it will support TM surface waves. And if the surface has some capacitive impedance given by the expression minus j omega mu by alpha, the surface will be supporting Te surface waves. So the Te surface waves are supported on capacitive surfaces. So now we can consider our high impedance surfaces case. In previous slide, we have seen that the, when we consider the equivalent circuit, it can be considered as a parallel combination of L and C. So the total impedance can be given by the expression Z of omega is equal to J omega L by 1 minus omega square LC. So at, at the lowest frequency, when we calculate this impedance, we can see that the impedance will be inductive. So based on this expression, we can see that these high impedance surfaces will support TM surface waves at the lower frequencies. And at a higher frequency, we can see that this impedance become equal to negative. So they will support TE surface waves at higher frequency. But at the resonance frequency, when we calculate the total impedance is a desert of omega, this term become zero and is a desert of omega become equal to infinity. So at the resonance, the impedance is infinite, which indicate that the surface does not support any surface wave propagation at the resonance frequency. So that is the main characteristics of high impedance surfaces. We call it as electromagnetic band gap. This indicates that at this band of frequency, they won't support any surface waves to propagate through the surface. So let's see what is the next property of high impedance surfaces. It is artificial magnetic conductor property. First, we will see the property of metals or perfect electric conductor. When we consider a metal, we know that the impedance offered by this metal is zero. So these are perfect conductors. And they did not support any electric field inside the conductor. This means that when a wave is incident on a metallic plate, it will be reflected back with 180 degree reflection phase. So these are the main characteristics of perfect electric conductor or metal. 
This equation is used to calculate the reflection phase of an uh, high impedance surfaces. So the reflection phase is related to the impedance of the surface and free space impedance by the relation. Imaginary part of natural logarithm of z minus eta by z plus eta. From this equation, we can see that when the impedance is very small as compared to free space impedance, the reflection phase become plus or minus 180 degree. So when the impedance is very small, the reflection phase will be either plus 180 or minus 180. And when the impedance matches to that of free space impedance, we can see that the reflection phase will be plus or minus 90. So at these frequency, at these uh, reflection phases, they will be having impedance equal to free space impedance. And we have seen that at the resonant frequency, the high impedance surfaces provide infinite impedance. And at this frequency, we can see that the reflection phase becomes zero. So that is represented by this point. So at the resonance, the high impedance surfaces will provide reflection phase zero. Because of these properties, that is high surface impedance and in band reflection property, these high impedance surfaces can be considered as a dual of perfect electric conductor. So when we consider perfect electric conductor, impedance is zero. For artificial magnetic conductor, impedance is infinity. And perfect electric conductor has reflection phase of 180 degree and a high impedance surfaces has reflection phase of zero degree. Because of this dual characteristics, it is also known as artificial magnetic conductor or AMC. So that's all about high impedance surfaces. So high impedance surfaces are basically periodic array of patches over the grounded dielectric, which will exhibit either AMC characteristics or electromagnetic band gap characteristics depending upon the structure. Thank you all for listening.